one, we're gonna have a little chat about why I got the COVID vaccine. We're gonna talk about all of my reservations, all of the research I did to help me make an informed decision, and a little bit about my side effects after getting the vaccine. Don't worry, this is a safe space. Hi everyone, I'm Danielle Denise and welcome to my channel. I typically make videos about my nursing journey, fitness journey, and a little bit of everything in between. So if that interests you, feel free to click that red subscribe button and turn on that post notification bell so that you don't miss an upload. Okay, so before I go in depth about my entire vaccination story and how I got it and everything, I just wanna acknowledge that I understand that this can be a sensitive topic because the pandemic had become politicized. I also understand that many Black Americans do not or have little faith in the healthcare system. So I wanna say that this video is not being put out to try to convince you to get this vaccine. It's totally your choice. This is simply my experience and the research that I did to help me make this decision. It is completely your choice whether or not you wanna get this vaccine. But if you're on the fence, allow my experience to help you out as others have helped me. So let's talk about why I got this vaccine and how I was able to receive it. For those of you who are new to my channel, I started a nurse externship about two months ago and I was given the choice between taking the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. At the time when I signed on, I was told that the Pfizer shipment had already started coming in and being distributed. So the next time that I would get to sign up for my appointment slot, it would be for Moderna. I ultimately ended up getting the Pfizer vaccine and that's because not as many people were getting the vaccine as expected. So there were plenty extra Pfizer vaccines. So I signed up and I got my first dose and it was Pfizer. Before even going in though, I did a little bit of research between the two vaccines to see which one was really better or if there was even really a difference at all. So I'm gonna leave a little link in the description box to one video that did a side-by-side -side comparison of their trials and ingredients and stuff like that that I'll leave in the description box. In fact, everything, all the resources that I'm gonna mention throughout this video will have links in the description box, so don't forget to check there. So thanks to work and a little bit of research, I went ahead and was able to get the vaccine and got Pfizer's. So before I talk about even more of the research that I did, let's talk about why I was going to hold out. Number one, I thought it was too soon. I did. I was definitely skeptic. I was like, how did they come up with this so fast? How is it already being approved? We just found out about Miss Rome not too long ago. How, how, whoa. And it's a new type of vaccine. What are we doing here? Also, we don't know the long-term symptoms or side effects or adverse effects of this vaccine yet. So I was a little hesitant because of that as well. Also, if you don't know about the Tuskegee experiment, which was supposed to be a control trial using specifically black Americans in that study, um, there was that. But I had some greater reasons as to why I wanted to get it. I was really leaning towards getting it because of the uncertainty of how my body would respond if I actually caught the virus. I have seen so many people on different ends of the spectrum where healthy adults have fallen ill really bad and have long-term horrible side effects or have died. And then you see people who look completely fine or have been asymptomatic. I've talked to asymptomatic people. As you guys know, I was contact tracing for quite a long time. I have heard it all. I have now seen it all in the hospital. And it was just a lot to take in to finally be on the front lines and feeling like I don't wanna end up like that. I don't wanna play the guessing game of will I be like that. Also, what we are finding out now is that COVID, after you have recovered and everything, you still have a risk for blood clots which those can lead to pulmonary embolisms or strokes, which ultimately lead to death. So another reason why I wasn't feeling like becoming infected with the virus. And then with the fact that I'm going to work now, I'm actually in the presence of COVID patients. I don't wanna bring that home if I were to catch it. Like I want to still see family, friends sometimes, you know, 
I don't want to bring that around anyone. I don't want to have that guilt of having it and having given it to somebody. And lastly, after doing so much research and watching videos, listening to podcasts and listening to professionals higher up than me and people who have been a part of control trials and vaccine creations and medical production or medicine production, I began to feel more comfortable with giving it a shot. No pun intended. <laughs> I decided that I would rather have immunity from the vaccine than the virus because the benefits outweighed the risks. So of course, let me share with you some of the questions that I was trying to answer when doing my research. I wanted to know what is this mRNA vaccine? How does it work? What's in it? Like, how did it come out so fast? I wanted to know all of that and let me share some of the answers that I found with you. Let's start with how long they've been working on mRNA vaccines and how did they come out with one so quickly. So I actually found that on the CDC, I'll leave a little screenshot right here, that they have been working on this technology for decades. I mean, I'm only a couple decades and a half old, so that's longer than me. But I also found the timeline to be surprising. I had the opportunity to speak with a woman who worked for Pfizer but retired now. She worked a part of their control trials specifically for oncology medications, but ultimately it's still the same. What actually takes so long isn't necessarily the creation of the vaccine, it's also the control trial phases and the business aspects and financial hurdles that they have to jump throughout the entire process. Again, videos linked down below showing you the results from that and links, FDA articles uh, comparing both all of that is in the description box. Another question I wanted to understand was how does it work? I'm very familiar with inactivated vaccines and traditional vaccines that we know of right now, but this whole mRNA thing was new and although they have been studying it for decades, we the public don't really know much about it. But after learning more and watching more videos and reading more articles, the one thing I understood was genome sequencing. And I had the opportunity to do it in my undergrad classes in genetics and we actually did it in a lab and that is when you take an organism and break it down and work all the way backwards just to find its genetic code. Luckily, researchers and scientists have already sequenced previous coronaviruses spike proteins and they already have the genetic code for it. So you're not getting injected with the virus, you're not getting injected with any DNA, it's just a messenger RNA which is basically like an ingredients list or a recipe for how to make the spike protein. I really hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, again, videos will be in the description box. So using messenger RNA, inject it into your body. Your body has the correct building blocks to make it. Your body makes the spike protein itself. You have not been injected with coronavirus. And then that allows your own body to make antibodies, which are your body's immune defense mechanisms to recognize that spike protein and say, hey, that's foreign. You don't live here. It's time for you to pack up and go. They attack it and they build memory cells or they make more memory cells so that if it ever encounters it in the future, it'll know, hey, I've seen you before. You don't belong here. You got to go. And that is how you build immunity through these mRNA vaccines. Again, I'll have more sciencey people explain it down below. I like to break it down super simple so that anybody can understand. And I hope that I said it in a way that it's easy to understand. I know a lot of people want to know what's in these vaccines. So what I found out is that when you're looking at the chemical structural sciencey name to everything that's in it, once you break it down, it's very simple. There's mRNA, which is what I just told you guys about, you know, the little messenger RNA telling you how to make the spike protein on the outside of the coronavirus. There's also lipids, which are fats. There's sugars and salts. That's pretty much it. So let's talk about the symptoms or side effects I had after receiving the vaccine. So after my first dose, all I had was the sore arm and a little bit of fatigue. If you've ever had the flu vaccine, people will say that the pain in the arm is comparable to that. However, I think not. I thought I got punched in the arm several times with a knife. Getting the vaccine did not hurt at all, actually didn't feel it either time. 
but after getting it and when my body was building the antibodies and making the spike protein doing what it needs to do to protect me it was a bit painful not unbearable because i didn't feel the need to take tylenol or anything for that round but it, it kind of hurt it hurt a little bit it hurt a little bit but i let my body do what it needs to do and surprisingly, after that, I was sent to like every COVID unit in the hospital. Wherever they had me to go, they wanted me to go. I don't know if they knew that I got the vaccine, but luckily I got it. It made me feel less anxious. I mean, I was already an anxious wreck because it was new places for me, but having the vaccine definitely helped. Round two, I was expecting the worst because some people I've heard that they have had the full fever, chills, body aches. Most of them have had that experience with the first dose. Like I said, I only had the sore arm and some fatigue, but they got it worse the second round. I mean, calling off work, tired, feeling beat up, beat down, but their bodies were building immunity. But I've also noticed that they're doing this prophylactically for everyone. They're giving them Tylenol to take once they get the second dose. So I was like, if they're giving it to me, I'm gonna take it. So I took it and I said, I'm gonna one up them and I'm not just gonna take it after you give it to me. I'm gonna take it every six hours around the clock. Some people are like, no, don't do it. Let your body do its thing. Keep building immunity and getting those antibodies up and running and building memory cells and all of that. And I'm like, haha, good for you. No. So I said, I'm gonna go ahead and let my body do what it does, but I'm gonna also take this Tylenol. And for me, then I didn't even have the arm pain. Didn't even have that same soreness from the first time. I was thinking, did I even get the vaccine? I know I got poked, but did I get it? Like, I did not feel the same as I did before. I mean, even with the first dose, I didn't mention that sometimes in between, I would just feel weird in between doses. I don't know if it was because of the constant exposure and my body being like, whoa, this is a lot. Um, but definitely now that I've gotten my second dose, I am fully vaxxed. It's been like a week or two now since I've gotten that second dose and I'm feeling a lot less anxious about being around COVID patients and being around people who have tested positive. I mean, we got the new strains. Hopefully they figure out if these vaccines are already protecting us against it because... Anywho, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. And don't forget all the resources and info that I've left screenshots for or mentioned throughout this video will be linked in the description box. I might even include some of the things that I didn't mention depending on how this video gets edited. Don't worry, it's in the description box. Links to articles, links to brief um, info sheet, links to other YouTubers and podcasters that I listen to feel free to check the description box and I will see you in my next upload or the next zombie apocalypse. I don't know. Bye.